welcome to Ask the Educator, a podcast brought to you by Healthmark Industries. Are you a sterile processing technician or manager? Maybe you work in infection prevention or biomedical engineering. Whether you're a frontline tech, endoscopy tech, OR nurse, or surgical services administrator, you undoubtedly have influence in medical device processing at your facility. In each episode, we speak with experts from the Healthmark Clinical Affairs team, industry leaders, or special guests from the trenches to answer your questions and bring you relevant industry information, equipping you for excellence in medical device processing. My name is Kevin Anderson, and I will be your host. Now let's get started. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Ask the Educator podcast. This is Kevin Anderson, your host. Uh, Joining me, as always, uh, Adam Okada. And for this uh, episode, we have Andy Micus from Gettinga. Uh, he just wrapped up, if you didn't uh, catch it, our latest international webinar uh, talking about what you're signing your name to. And so we're going to do a kind of follow-up podcast to that. Uh, but for those of you who missed that webinar, I definitely encourage you to go back and check that out, especially if you're in need of CEs like I am, because it's that time of year for me. Uh, so please uh, go back and check that out. But uh, let's get into it. Andy, welcome to the show. You know, looking forward to kind of recapping uh, what what you were talking about on the webinar. No, thanks, Kevin and Adam. Thanks for having me. In that webinar, you discussed uh, sterilization and the importance of documentation. This is something that, you know, in, in my nursing background, I you know, it's kind of drilled into you how important the documentation part is, you know, and sterile sterilization, I think people realize like, uh, or, or maybe don't have that same emphasis on the documentation. So what is it about that part, that component that makes it so important? No, absolutely, man. And, and so, you know, when we're talking about sterilization, you know, we know we have parameters we have to hit, but, but how are we making sure, right? Like, we, we have our, our monitors, we, we have, you know, the, the chemical, right? We have our, our biological, but what's the other one? We, a mechanical. We've got to verify that mechanical. So it's so critical that we understand, you know, the parameters. One, so, so we can identify failures with the equipment, right? Anything that fails in that, that piece of equipment, anything that fails in that load ultimately translates to a failure to the patient, right? And what are the impacts of that, right? As, as SPD guys, we know if you have a failed load, now you have to redo the load, right? You got to put everything out, repackage it, rerun it, right? And how awesome is it to have to rewrap an entire load of loaders? Nobody's got time for Ain't that. Nobody got time. <laughs> <laughs> right? so, so it is. It is very vital. One for for the employee, two for the patient, and, and then three for the for the overall process. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's an incredibly important process, and one that we don't talk enough uh, about enough. But you told a story during the presentation that I thought was really interesting and really hit home the importance of documentation. And not only that, but the fact that it is a legal document. So tell that story that you told in the webinar about your mom and what happened to her. Yeah, man. Uh, so so she's at home. She's retired and she gets a phone call and it's, hey, we need you to come in. <laughs> she had to go and she had to sit in court and give a deposition on her charting. Uh, and, and so you know, she 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 was able to to get it and and was able to kind of piece back together, you know what what had occurred. But man, can you imagine nine years later, like getting called in to talk about a load and, and what you did? Yeah, nine nine years. I can't remember what happened nine days ago. Nine years would have been was completely say, gone from my memory. Uh, uh, right, and and so within my career, I've had a few of these instances where, where things like this happen. So but why I love this presentation so much, because it, it is so vital, right? And so ultimately, she was able to speak to, to her charting. Um, they they were able to, to, to rule in favor of the hospital and, and things progressed as, as they should. But I mean, God forbid, you, you don't, you're, you're unable to. And, and right, as an individual, then what happens, right? That now, now, you're being held legally responsible potentially for something that happened. As we know, you know, nosy, nosy infections are not cheap. Yeah. Not to mention the horrible consequences to the patient and, you know, the facility, you know, incurs a, a, a huge hit. All the above. Yeah. In terms of, you know, whatever the lawsuit, but then, you know, there's, uh, you know, public relation damage there and all kinds of things that nobody wants to go through. And, 
You know, I've been fortunate so far, you know, I'm knocking on wood right now uh, that I've not had to participate in such a deposition, but uh, I have uh, worked with other nurses who have, and all they tell me is you do not want to participate in that. <laughs> yeah, when, when I had to go to court for, for that other instance, and I know we're going to talk about yeah. it, um, but on the way to the, to the state courthouse, my HR rep is like, look, you know, they, they have the deposition from the first case. They already know the details. Like they may have some clarifying questions. So just sit tight and answer what they ask you. Well, we get in the room and there's three judges, right? And they go, all right, Mr. Mike, why don't you spend the next 15 minutes going over uh, the situation, what happened? And it was like, wait a minute. You said I wasn't going to have to say anything. <laughs> Thankfully, we had spent a lot of time on this. And so it was all fresh in the mind. But yeah, I, I couldn't imagine not being able to speak to it and being drilled by those judges. That is not an area I would want to be. Um, I, I I would not want to sit, sit where you sat and have to deal with that. That would be just horribly anxiety provoking. Um, so it's like one of those things, you know, like sometimes you can't control whether or not you get called, but you can control how you document. And I think that was, you know, kind of the 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 main point of the of the story but if, if you can go ahead and expound on that like why on earth were you at this <laughs> why on earth were you at this uh this deposition <laughs> what happened was we we had a third shift employee he was running his last load uh went to hit start on the machine and you know sometimes you, you press that button and, and it doesn't always catch and so he ended the shift now if you work third shift you know rolling out of there you're you're pretty tanked right you're you're pretty exhausted <laughs> and, and so hit that start button rolled off did uh did shift report and then and then went home so a few hours later uh first shift employee goes to put a load in that that unit opens the door and, and there's that load just just sitting there and and so you know we know the chemical indicators inside are going to turn with that heat exposure so there was one thing that that needed to be identified, but then again, you know, as we talked in the presentation, there was no printout, right? And, and so there there were a lot of things that were missed. Um, so the employee pulled the load out, uh, no printout, right? Unloaded the the sterilizer racks, loaded up the case cart, shot that case cart up to the OR. Uh, unfortunately, the drill got pulled off pretty quickly and, and pulled into a room and, and was used on a patient. So there was an opportunity that got missed in the room, you know, checking that, that internal, internal indicator, but, but that's how, you know, it, it got presented to me. I get a phone call and it's, it's the OR. They said, Hey, this internal indicator, cause there was a, another tray that made it into a room, but was caught. I said, Hey, this, this indicator didn't turn. I go, well, is it just not ex like through the accept or, or no, like it hasn't changed at all. <laughs> and, and so I knew right away, like we have an unsterile load that made it to the OR. Right. So I go up, I get it. Sure enough, you know, yep, nothing. And, and so I get back to to SPD. And so I go straight to to the logbook. And I'm expecting to find the missing piece of paper. Right. You know, I talked in the presentation about making sure that you document. Well, there was a documentation and there was a printout. And I was like, man, this this isn't right. Like we can't have a printout for a load that didn't happen. <laughs> And so I, you know, I start looking at those components, load number, and I'm, I'm comparing it to the, the load before. And I go, wait a minute, this is the same load number as the previous load. And I knew right away, like reprinted the the documentation. Yeah, and, and so you you always want to give the employee the benefit of the doubt. You know, you don't want to just go straight to you know falsifying documentation and things like that. And so, you know, we we partnered with infection control and and really did a deep dive, man. We did a, like a two-day investigation and we put together a questionnaire of what our process was, where our protocols were. Um I even took the the wrap of the tray that was sent to the OR. And then I actually simulated some other trays. I I put a tray in for an hour, another tray in for 3 hours, and so we laid them all out with a, a wrap of a tray that was sterile. And we said, can you identify the trays that are unsterile? And the employee was able to, to identify all the trays that were unsterile, including the trays she sent to the OR, the, the, the exact ones, right? So 
through the investigation, you know, through it all, we, we identified that there wasn't an information informational gap, right? There wasn't an educational opportunity. It was just lack of paying attention. So when we dug into it further, you know, when we went back to Adam, you were you were asking me about that question and, and I talked about accountability. There was a history of of quality errors, right? Not only just with documentation, but also decontam, right? Uh, assembly. So ultimately, you know, unfortunately, that that employee did lose her job. Um, but but look at the impact that it could have had, right? Like thank God, you know, nobody got hurt or there wasn't any infections or any of that. But it, it very well could have happened, and that's as close as you want to get to that situation. Yeah, and the, that story I think really hits home better than any. Like we could say to well, we're blue in the face, like check your documentation. But that story really highlights the reason that you check it, right? Because something can go wrong. And unless you're actually verifying the information you're looking at, how do you really know? And that kind of brings me to my to, to my next question, which is in sterile processing, we've all seen those technicians who they just walk up to the sterilizer and they sign their name to the printout and they walk away. Um, how do we change that mindset from I have to sign my printout to I have to check this load to ensure it's sterile? Consistency and accountability, right? It, it falls back to leadership. What onus are you putting on the employees? What follow up are you doing? Right. Uh, you know, talking about pressure gauges and temperatures and pre like that's not beautiful stuff. But, you know, finding these opportunities, finding these real world stories and, and really reiterating, like, you know, we always say, like, think about it. If it's your parent. Right. That's one thing that's easy to say. But but how do you simulate? that that impact right do you take them up to the or you know one of the things that that we did and, and is, is similar and i think you could you could probably find you know this in, in infection control but we would have the surgeons come down and do in services to the staff right and so we, we would have them do you know the impact of what happens in the room when we're missing instrument and, and they would come down and so i always put an onus on the surgeon like you can come down and do this presentation but our staff gets to ask you questions too, <laughs> you know, because it's two-way street. And so they would go through and, and staff would love it, man. He'd go through the operation and he'd talk about the impacts of the patient. And I think that kind of plays to, to making sure your documentation is right. Right. But, but then the staff were like, well, why can't all the instruments get put back in the right tray? <laughs> and now the surgeon is like, wait, they don't come back to you all together. No wonder it takes, you know, 10 hours. to get my <laughs> So now that that surgeon's in the room as an advocate for SPD, it's beautiful, but you got to have the communication, right? You, you got to continue that education. You got to continue uh, really holding people accountable and, and then and teaching those lessons. That idea of having the surgeons come down and present uh, to SPD, I think is, that's actually one I've not heard very often, if at all. I've heard of, you know, our staff coming to SPD and SPD staff going to the OR and, and observing and things like that. But actually, doing a little presentation, a little Q&A back and forth. Oh, man, that that's incredible. Um, I love that you guys did that and actually did that with success. You might even be able to do another podcast on that or something. But uh, that being said, man, great job on the webinar today. Great job on the podcast. Do you have any final thoughts about documentation that uh, we can leave everybody with? Man, I can't stress it enough. Understand, you know, what you're what you're signing. Understand you know, what you're looking at. And, and as I give this presentation in facilities, you know, uh, to to really drive that home, I encourage people to go to their local chapter meetings, right? Go talk to people in other facilities, understand what's being done. You know, if you've been in one facility your entire career, you're not an expert in sterile processing, right? There are things that, that you have probably been taught that aren't maybe right. And so you got to go talk to other people, right? You got to network. You got to hear stories elsewhere. You know, you got to have that communication. And that's why I think the local chapters are so critical in, in driving forward just the, the level of professionalism and education within our industry. Great job, Andy. That's a great place to, to leave it off. Thanks again for coming on the show. Anytime, Kevin. All opinions expressed on this show are those of the presenters. Before using any medical device, it is important to review the device manufacturer's instructions for use.